Hello again, everyone. This is Joe Hentges with Beyond the Chart, and this is technical analysis of the stock market today. Today is Wednesday, December 24th, Christmas Eve. I want to wish everyone a happy Merry Christmas, and uh, if you're not celebrating Christmas, I hope you have a great uh, happy holidays uh, this time of year. All right, let's uh, look at the stock market like we usually do. Then I'm going to take a quick look at Chihu, uh, YY, and Melco Crown Entertainment. Okay, so the Dow Industrials were up six points today. So you can see we only traded basically half a session. We were done at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. And a very small doji bar in here. Um, and, and really what I'm noticing, and we'll see this on all of the indices, you notice how it starts off. Now granted, the second bar on this move was much bigger than even the first bar. But it's almost like a pendulum. It's slowing down, it's slowing, and then you like these last three bars, smaller range, smaller, smaller range, smaller range. Uh, let's take a look at um, the S&P 500. Even more so, you can see it. It's almost like it's just slowing down and it's ready to go into reverse. I mean, that's kind of the image I have in my mind. And you can see how, now sometimes it'll slow down, pause and go sideways, and then pop to the upside again. But you can see how when it starts to round over a little bit, I mean, it had a pretty strong trajectory to the upside. Now we're getting this pause. This is either, we've either had a one, two, and we're off on three, but even if we're off on three to the high side here, you, we're going to get a, we're going to get a, well, you know, a second wave pullback of some kind. It may be shallow, may be deep. We just don't know for sure yet. But I'm expecting some kind of pullback. So that's what I'm watching for. There's always the possibility this is some kind of A, B, C, more more uh, corrective action to develop before we push to the high side. Uh, and again, what I need to do is go back and look at this wave count, maybe on an hourly basis, and look at it a little bit more uh, and see whether it's truly, I remember I thought I was confused. I was expecting more to the downside in here and this move here on the 17th uh, actually surprised me uh, based on the wave count. So uh, we'll just have to, I'll have to go back and take a look. New York Composites, similar type thing. Definitely smaller range, smaller range, smaller range. You know, it looks like we're just getting ready to pause and it's almost like it's losing momentum and getting ready to drop back down. Now, I did see this in here. I do this trend line because it, you know, I could, you could, it, it just, the imagery caught me from the, you know, it could be some kind of continuation head and shoulders in here. I think that's a long shot, but I don't know. I mean, if we get up here and break this trend line and the New York composite punches to the high side, then this may be a legitimate scenario. And if that's the case, it's going to be one heck of a move coming to the high side. So that is something I noticed the other day. Russell 2000 continues to push up in here and I don't know if it's just going to continue to stay in the on the bottom half of this of this trend line or not. Uh, but again, now we've been up one, two, three, four, five, six, six days on the Russell. I think almost all the markets the same way. New York uh, or the NASDAQ um, Similar again, doji type bar today, you know, very, very tight. So again, we're getting compressed action. Uh, again, this time of year, the volume does go down. It's holiday session, last couple of weeks of the year. Next week's going to be a similar type scenario. So it, do, it gets a little bit, a uh, little quirky in here sometimes. So you just have to be aware of that. Uh, let's take a look at the indicators real quick. Short-term trading index. 10-day is still right here in the middle. We're just fluctuating back and forth. The VIX is pulled back naturally. Um, here, I'm surprised the RSI hasn't dropped more than this, though. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the VIX is pulling back. And again, this is kind of rounding in reverse from the stock market, you know. I mean, it, it almost gives you the feeling like, okay, we were, you know, in, in dramatic free fall, and then all of a sudden it's tightening up, tightening up. And uh, it could be confirming that we might get a little pop to the upside, which would mean a little bit of a pullback in the market. And the last one is the high-low index. Uh, we've pulled back here today. Yesterday, pretty good little pop in terms of the 
284 new highs versus, uh, you know, above new lows. So a net positive new highs. And we pulled back some today, 190 today. So, but we're still up here in this range, uh, well above, you know, right up in the top range of where we've been for the last almost two months. So uh, that's staying strong. All right, let's take a look at the uh, some of the uh, international uh, global markets here real quick. The uh, by the way, the put to call ratio is still it's like 0.65, so it hasn't gotten into any any kind of an extreme 10 day reading yet. I think it's 0.65 on a 10 day uh, average of the equity put to call. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the German DAX. German DAX, I don't have a reading for today. They may have been closed today. I wasn't really sure, but this is through yesterday, 23rd. So again, not a whole lot, you know, kind of tight movement in here. Did not, doesn't look like it took out Monday's high in there. And um, the Russia RTSI index, uh, you know, it's bounced back over the last week and then tight in here today. Uh, yeah, it's 24th. So again, we talked about this last time, the dramatic sell-off. And um, I need to open this up so I can see this, get to India. And India is continuing to pull back. We could be doing some kind of A, B, C type of thing. I'm not sure that this is the start of a new, um, I'm not sure this is enough of a way for. I mean, I'd like to see a little more like a zigzag something in here. So I get a feeling we're still heading down a little bit further still uh, to, to the downside on the uh, nifty 50. All right, and the uh, Shanghai composite. This, uh, remember this dotted line I put in here a, a couple of a few weeks ago? I can't remember, it was two or three weeks ago, and uh, it was previous major resistance, and it continued to provide that major resistance. This went up uh, on Monday and came right up into that and then sold off, and we got this this last little move like I thought it would just based on this action uh, and based on the wave count, you know, we end up one, two, strong three, four, five. So it looks to me like a third uh, minor move to the upside. We should be doing some kind of fourth uh, pullback. It may be a deep zigzag given that if this is correct in here too, this is kind of a shallow second wave. And uh, so we'll just have to see, but right now, Looks like the Shanghai composites into corrective mode. And, uh, you know, there's been all the publicity about, I can't remember who it was, somebody in the government's now investigating whether or not there was uh, uh, some kind of uh, price rigging or something related to the technology stocks and uh, uh, that type of thing. So who knows? All right. Um, let's see. Okay, now I want to take a look at Chihu 360. Chihu got a little bounce today. Uh, came back uh, nice, nicely. Uh, I do think there is the possibility that based on if we're doing a WXY here, and the, the reason we call it WXY is because we've got a completed ABC, but then we continue to do another type of ABC uh, corrective action. And whenever you start to do that, you make the first ABC a W, then you get an X, and then you get the Y for the, the third one. Is just how it works out. And when I look at, again, and I've shown this before, I believe, if I go down to the length of W back to, I think this is close, right in here, 100% Y would equal W at right around in here, and we've hit that range. So there's a good possibility that this is the bottom in here and this is trying to bounce to the upside now again you know you're going to need we're going to need more than this i mean because right now the trend lines are still down and now granted the 10 is trying to turn but we got one day above the 10 and the 21 is pretty strong down and here's the 55 so uh it may be trying it may have hit a point where it's getting ready to turn up and we'll have to just watch to see if we kind of if it turns from here uh the next one is yy uh, where are you? There it is. Okay, YY, I put out a trade idea on this today, this morning. Uh, and I know I kind of hesitated because, you know, the volume's light and, you know, and, and that type of thing. But it, this looked like it was ready to start continuing to the downside. And, of course, then it went up 75 cents today. So, uh, but 
we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I still think this is looking like and acting like it's continuing to want to break down. Uh, the um, intermediate and short term trends are to the downside. Uh, and I don't think that this little ABC has gone as far as it's going to go yet. It looks like a flat to me, an ABC, B coming back up to the beginning of A, going slightly beyond it. And so when I do the projections off of that, and well, I mean, when you have a flat, C typically comes back down to the end of A to begin with, okay? And then if I just do a projection to show where C would be equal to A, um, I lost it. Come on. Here's A. C will be equal to A at around 57. OK, so that's one methodology I'm using for a target to, to create a target. Uh, so uh, right now, that's what we're doing. I'm looking for YY to continue to the downside, at least for a little more. Now, Melco Crown Entertainment, man, these casino stocks have just been getting smashed. And I don't see this changing a whole lot. There is the possibility it's trying to bottom. But when you look at this, see the red line is a 55. And the, this is the 233. This is my version of the 5200, OK? So you look at the, the long term trend is therefore to the downside. The e intermediate trend, the 21 is below the 55. All the trends are to the downside. The last time you got something this traumatic uh, where the 55 was that far below the, the 233, you, you know, you got short term periods of it back in here. It was back, okay, we had an instance back in, uh, what, late 2010 into 2011 uh, where they struggled. And then, of course, the 2008 uh, fiasco uh, back over here. So right now, this is looking fairly negative. The real question is, is it going to start to bottom in here? And, uh, I mean, this is a pretty good little snapback rally. Uh, could be the first first leg up. It'll, you, know, you know, if that's the case, it'll probably pull back. Uh, and it could be nothing more than a bear market rally. It's really hard to tell. But again, you know, you don't even have the 10 above the 21 yet in terms of crossing. And you'll get that on a short term basis sometimes like right in here. So yeah, you do get these false little, you know, rallies and then it continues to the downside. Uh, again, lower highs, lower highs across the board, lower lows across the board. So the trend is still to the downside, and we'll just have to keep watching to see if there's any kind of um, foothold, any kind of reversal formation or pattern. I just don't see it yet uh, that Melco would start to show. So, all right, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back on Saturday. I think the market is only open on Friday uh, at this point. I believe it's all day on Friday. Uh, so we'll be back with the weekend update, and uh, we'll look at the things then, see how Friday shook out. So. Again, everyone have a great uh, Christmas and great holiday uh, session. And uh, uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you on Saturday.